Today's lesson is the first in a two-part lesson on covalent bonding. In this particular lesson, we are going to start off by looking at the basics of covalent bonding and what it means to be covalently bonded. We will show you how covalent and why covalent bonds form in the first place. And then we will do some practice on determining Lewis structures, and that is basically saying how we form uh, molecular compounds using covalent bonding. And then finally, we'll look at some of the multiple bond possibilities in order to actually satisfy what's known as the octet rule when covalent bonds are formed. The first thing we should recognize about a covalent bond is that in a covalent bond, electrons are going to be shared between molecules, or between atoms, I mean, as opposed to an ionic bond in which electrons are transferred from one atom to another. The main reason for this is that in an ionic bond, one atom is willing to get rid of electrons while another is more than willing to receive those electrons. In a covalent bond, these bonds are going to happen between two nonmetals. And if you looked at the Lewis dot model or the electron dot model of these types of atoms, they actually are all looking to gain electrons. And since they're looking to gain electrons, one is not willing to really part with its electrons. So they have to come up with elaborate ways to share their electrons. So what we're showing here is a little representation of a simulation. This is actually showing two oxygen molecules that are kind of, or I'm sorry, two oxygen atoms, I apologize, that are pretty far apart from one another, and they're not really influencing one another. Now, what we know is that the nucleus of an atom is made up of positive charges, and the outer shell is full of electrons that have negative charges. Now, what happens here is that if we look on this graph, we see that there's a set level of potential energy here, um, and the goal of, of anything in nature, really, is to lower its potential energy to the lowest possible state. And what we see that will happen here is that if I bring these together, we don't influence the energy until we get really close. And now what happens is that these electron um, levels are getting near each other. And as you see, the atoms actually seem to suck one another in. And that is because the nucleus of one atom actually attracted to the electrons of the other atom causing them to attract. And at the same time, now the nuclei are also repelling. We have this balance going on of attractive forces between electrons and protons, but also the repulsive forces of the protons in each of the two atoms. And what happens is that they've reached a lower energy state, and these are actually fine in this position. Now, what happens, though, is that if I start bringing this atom here closer together, that force of repulsion becomes much greater because of the proximity of the positive charges and what we see here is that that energy spikes way up. And that energy, when it spikes way up, is not where the atom would like to be. And as we see, if we let go of it, it releases the atom. In fact, they repel each other to a point where the atom flies off the screen and they no longer bond. So what happens here is, again, the atoms are trying to achieve that lowest energy level in which the electrons and uh, protons are attracting one another, but not to the point where the protons get too close together to want to actually physically repel. So we see it's kind of like a fine balance between the two things. All right, and that's what happens in a covalent compound. Now what we're going to do is we're not going to worry so much about the energies, but we are going to move to another um, Inkscape simulation to show you how you figure out how these atoms are going to share these electrons and what unique ways that they can do to, to make this work. Okay, here we are back at Inkscape. Um, what I'd like to show you right now is why and how covalent bonds form. Now, the way it's going to form is based off of the same rules that we used before. Every atom is looking to have eight valence electrons. So the first thing we must do, draw our electron dot model and give ourselves the eight electrons we need. So chlorine has a total of seven according to the periodic table. So I'm going to place electrons around chlorine until it looks the way it wants. Okay, so I've done four. Now i got to go pair up the sides. There's number five, six seven okay and what we see here is that this is what a chlorine atom would look like it is looking to gain this one electron now the problem is that if i only have other chlorines nearby okay and let's say i've just created another chlorine if i take this guy and i look at him what we see that we have here is that each of these chlorines is looking to gain an electron so if this guy took chlorine from this or i'm sorry an electron from this guy this guy would not be very happy because he's looking for one. He's not really looking the part with his electrons. So what they have to do is they have to come up with a different way as opposed to what you did in an ionic bond. In ionic bonds, one of the atoms was willing to give the electron while the other one really wanted to take it. So they kind of naturally just went together. But these are not going to do that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this chlorine and I'm just going to move, whoops, not that one. 
All right, I want to move this one. And I'm going to make it have the same electron dot model except for the lonely electron happens to be on this side. If you notice, there is a way to make these guys kind of happy if we do the following. If I take this chlorine and I bring it close enough so that their regions overlap, just like we saw in the simulation, what happens here is that when they get close enough, this chlorine can kind of lay claim to that one lonely electron that was on the chlorine on the other side. And if we notice, now there are eight electrons around this chlorine, even though one of them technically belonged to this chlorine. And this chlorine is now looking at the same thing. It now has eight electrons, even though this top one originally came from this chlorine. So they didn't uh, pass them from one another, but rather they chose to share their electrons. So what we have here is a molecule of Cl2 in which the atoms had to come up with a unique way to actually satisfy their octet rule. And that is to have eight electrons around them. And they did this by sharing their electrons. And this is how we go about doing covalent bonding. All right, now, sometimes they don't work as pretty. So we're going to show you a couple of different ways to do this. So I'm going to grab these chlorines. And I'm going to move them over here, get them out of the way. I'm going to move some of these electrons back over to our electron pool that we have over here that we can grab from. All right, now what we're going to do is show you a different approach as to how this can be done. And we're going to use it using the concept of valence totals. So let's say, for example, I pair up two oxygens. So I will copy my, um, sorry, I will copy this oxygen here. I'll put these guys next to each other, and here's the rule for how to use valence totals to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our valence total, and we're going to look at how many electrons we have to work with. So the first step in this procedure is to say, okay, well, how many valence electrons do I have? Well, according to this, oxygen is going to have five, I'm sorry, six valence electrons. All right, now there are two atoms that are going to bring these uh, valence electrons to the party, I guess we can say, meaning that there's going to be able to be 12 valence electrons that will be allowed to be used and shared amongst these two atoms. So when I do my picture here, I have to put 12 electrons around these guys in order to satisfy what they're looking for. So what I'm going to do, and this is a different approach, it's going to be kind of a trial and an error um, and a lot of erasing as we go. I am going to give everybody the electrons they want at first. So I'm going to give him two in between the two of them. So they're going to share that pair. I'm going to put two here. I'm going to put these two on the top. Okay, and this looks very much like the Cl2 that we formed earlier, except for now it's O2, and it's pretty much how it's going to form. However, this isn't completely correct yet. Okay, I'm going to have to draw the rest of these in, so we're going to bring one here. Now what we're seeing here is that I'm giving everybody the electrons that they want, and not paying attention to any rules, I'm just kind of drawing them so they look the way they would like to look. And if we do this, what we're going to see here is uh, I've given out electrons. So if I look, I put in six valence electrons. I'm sorry, I put in uh, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. All right, I've run into a little bit of a problem. I've given out more electrons than there actually were available in the first place. So what has to happen here is that we have to satisfy this octet rule, but these guys can't have all the electrons that we gave them. What we said here is that this oxygen has three pairs to itself, and it's sharing a pair. And this oxygen here has three pairs to itself, and it also has to share a pair. The problem is that they can't work that way, So because there's not that many electrons to give. So here's our solution. What we're going to do, I'm going to move this guy over a little bit so we can see this a little bit better, is that because this can't work, now we have to kind of go back and say, sorry guys, we gave you too many electrons. We can't afford to do this. You have to share some. So we say to this oxygen over here, whoops, sorry. I'm going to highlight these two electrons. I'm not going to highlight any pair. I'm going to say, you know what? I got to start taking some pairs away. You can't have your own pair. And to be fair, this guy can't have its own pair either. Now, what I did is I've actually taken two electrons away. I've dropped my total down to 12. If I take two more away, now I drop my total down too much. So what I do instead is I say, okay, well, I took away each of your own individual pairs that you can no longer have, but instead I'm going to let you share a pair, another pair. So if we look here, it's a kind of a little bit weird look to it, but this oxygen now has eight valence electrons around it. It has two on the top, two on the bottom, and four immediately to the left. Add them all up, and that's eight valence electrons. This oxygen over here 
Same thing, he has two above, two below, four to its immediate right. This guy is also satisfied by having his eight electrons around him, but they had to do it in a different way. They had to share two pairs of electrons. This guy here would be called a double bond. Okay, this would be double bonded. Oops, <laughs> typing mistakes there. And the reason it is double bonded is it is sharing two pairs. And that's basically how this is going to work. So we have satisfied our rules. All right, so just to show you one last example, can we have triple bonds? And the answer is yes. So what we're going to do is the same approach. Okay, I'm going to get rid of my O's here, put them back, put this O over here, put some of these dots back over on the other side, and do our last example. So for example, let's say I have nitrogen. Okay, I'm going to copy my nitrogen, control C, copy, paste. I'm going to put some nitrogens. I'm going to spread them a little bit this time because I know it's going to happen. Okay, I'm going to do the same approach. Okay, I'm going to do my valence total. And what we're going to do is we're going to give ends in here. We have two ends to work with. And N has five valence electrons. And because there's five valence electrons and there are two of these atoms, well, then what happens if we multiply those two? We have 10 valence electrons to work with. So I have even fewer. Now I'm going to do what I just did before. I'm going to give everybody their two electrons that they wanted. So I'm going to give, or their eight electrons that they wanted. Just going to be liberal and give them all away. So we're going to say, okay, you can have your two. Or you can have some more here. So basically we're going to give everybody what they want. Okay, and then we're going to worry about if we did it wrong later. I'm going to take these two. We're going to put them here. Okay. I'm going to make life easier. I'm going to copy these. And then I'm just going to place them here. So we've given everybody what they want. But again, the problem that we have here is if we count the electrons, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, I've given way too many. So because I've given way too many, I can't let them do this. So I need to take away pairs. I was too liberal. So I'm going to take away a pair from nitrogen here. So I'm going to hit delete. Can't have yours. Okay, you're going to take away your two. Okay, and what we're going to do instead is saying, okay, you guys can't have your own individual pairs. We just don't have enough to go around. So instead, we're going to force you to share a pair in the middle instead. So we take them away and we put new pairs back in the middle. So take away two pairs, always put one back. That's the rule. Take away two, put one back. So if we look now, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 10, 12, we still have too many. Every time we do this, we're going to take two out of our total. So we say, okay, this doesn't work. We need to take some more electrons away. So we're going to take one away from this nitrogen. We're going to try to keep this symmetric looking, by the way. It makes it pretty. Okay, we hit delete here. And we're going to put two back. Like we said, we take two pairs away, and we put two pairs back. I'm going to put them this way. And what we now see is that this is a weird-looking arrangement here. But if we look, this nitrogen now has the eight that it needed. Okay, it has two here, but three to the right, but that adds up to a total of eight electrons directly around it. And this nitrogen here has two to the right and six in the middle, sharing a total of eight electrons. So what we've done is we've successfully created, in this case, a triple bond. Okay, and in a triple bond, you're gonna share three pairs of electrons. Okay, and this is basically satisfying our rules. So what we've done today is we've shown you how you can do a covalent bonded molecule. It's a process of giving electrons, taking them back until everybody has what they want. Now there are other ways to do this and shorter ways, but this is generally a foolproof way of doing it where you can always make sure you get this right. Please make sure to use the notes on my website and um, make sure that you bring any questions with you that you have to class and don't forget to take the online quiz that goes with this lesson.